for certain. It is a blustery day out here today. Thank you for joining us on the VSO Gun Channel. And we're out here purposefully on a windy day because we have this Stag 15 here that is chambered and it is one of the first rifles to be chambered in the all new 224 Valkyrie cartridge. This video is gonna be taking a look at what is 224 Valkyrie, why it's important, what it does over other calibers, and uh, we have a lot of testing to be hopping into, so this video is gonna be heavy on the testing side. So real quick, we're gonna tell you a little bit about this rifle and get to it. The Stag 15 Valkyrie is Stag Arm's first entry into the new 224 Valkyrie cartridge, a round designed to push the precision 22 caliber AR-15 to its maximum potential beyond 1,000 yards. The rifle is built around an 18-inch, 1 in 7 twist button rifle 416 stainless steel fluted heavy barrel. And the operating system is comprised of a low-profile mid-length direct impingement gas system, a 6.8 SPC2 M16 bolt carrier, and an H buffer. This is all wrapped in Stag's 16.5-inch M-Lock SL handguard that puts the rifle on an 8.1-pound diet with QD points where applicable, three-sided M-Lock, and lightning cuts wherever structural integrity allows. Embedded in the forged set of 7075 T6 aluminum receivers is Stag's nickel boron coated two-stage match trigger that breaks just under 4.5 pounds. The rifle is set up for all weather conditions with a Hogue rubberized grip to ensure proper purchase and a Magpul aluminum enhanced trigger guard for compatibility with heavy winter gloves. From the fully adjustable Magpul PRS stock to the VG6 Precision Epsilon nozzle device, the rifle measures in at 39 inches. The barrel has been threaded with the industry standard half by 28 thread pattern for easy exchange of muzzle equipment and compatibility with sound suppressors. All of this makes the Stag 15 Valkyrie a strong, compact option for those looking to get into the new caliber without turning it into a bench rest safe queen. To initiate our testing on 224 Valkyrie, as with any rifle suitable for long range precision work, we wanted to track break in period on this rifle to determine what it looks like to season the rifle before we started talking about capabilities of the cartridge. To start out with, before we even mounted optics on the rifle, I took it out to the range and fired a few magazines of ammo rapidly while suppressed to heat it up and allow copper to settle in. From there, I mounted a Nikon X1000 rifle scope in a Midwest Industries 30mm mount and field zeroed the rifle at 100 yards. After 100 rounds of general use, I grouped the rifle using the 75 grain TMJ ammunition by firing a single cold bore shot followed by a rapid fire segment of 10 rounds to ensure the rifle was hot and then immediately followed up with a grouping of at least 3 rounds. I then used the rifle for another 100 rounds and repeated the process. Our results showed no substantive difference between the 1 and 200 round groups, however it did support that the stag much preferred the 90 grain loads at approximately 0.4 MOA, which is quite impressive out of a new rifle on a cold day. So to play it safe when breaking in a 224 Valkyrie, we will call break in approximately 100 rounds. After this test, we went to the chronograph to get some readings on both loadings that we had on site. While there, we found that despite what most are calling a short barrel for 224 Valkyrie, we were within 200 feet of Federal's advertised velocities on a cold day. From there, we put a true zero on the rifle and went to the 400 yard mark to see if spot on played nice with the Valkyrie. 
All right, guys, so we've taken our first step back. We're now at 400 yards. We're gonna test the Valkyrie using the 75 grain projectiles. Uh, we're doing this here today because as you can see, we've got some precipitation coming down as well as a little bit of wind down there. Uh, just a note, I went ahead and put in our ballistics data for the 75 grain into spot on, which is paired to our Nikon Black X1000 here, and it is dead nuts. All right, so this is the setting that I used for the windage. And we've got a full value, right to left wind, I'm sure you guys can hear it on the microphone right now, going about 20 miles per hour. And this is the deviation that we got from zero at 400 yards. One, right over one MOA. That's pretty awesome. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I a big fan. I can't get over how light it is. Yeah, it doesn't weigh a, a, no. a thing, man. No, and even... I mean, even with that a... big honking bipod that we added to it. Yeah, and you know you've got weight from the glass, and it's just... Yeah. The it's... gun itself, I believe, weighs eight pounds. It's impressive. It, really it is. is. It Recoil is. impulse is nothing. Yep. And it's fast. Oh my god, is that thing fast? <laughs> yeah, it's there before you know it. <laughs> So when we're talking about minimum safe distances for shooting steel, a lot of people correlate that with a safety factor for the shooter. And uh, while that is taken into account, what we're really talking about is target degradation. What are you gonna start to see as far as breakdown of your target? And uh, that then leads to, you know, small fields coming back at people once the targets start to degrade. So my question is with the higher velocities of 224 Valkyrie and their heavier bullet weights, what does that look like on a steel target? This is the 223A round that I fired off camera, and uh, we got a little bit of lead build up there, but no damage to the strike face of the uh, target at all. This is a 75 grain, and this is the 90 grain. So the 75 grain uh, actually did damage the, t the strike face of the target very slightly. I'll get a close up picture for you guys. And then the 90 grain here did nothing. So if you're shooting at 100 yards, pick the 90 grain. If you're shooting on 550 steel, and you shouldn't have a problem. You might have a little bit of degradation if you're shooting the 75 grain. All right, guys, you're gonna have to give me a break. I'm a little bit out of breath because I just ran up this hill behind me. You guys can see my ATV down there. Uh, and the reason I ran up this hill and I was in such a big hurry was because uh, it's getting dark and I wanted to get to this target before the sun went down because we were out shooting some, uh, some data today for uh, the 224 Valkyrie. We wanted to see what it would look like to shoot at a thousand yards. Uh, it was really windy and we didn't think that there was really any chance that we were gonna get a hit on the thing. We were really just trying to give Doc something to look at through the spotting scope so we could see how our calculations were matching up to the previous ranges that we had shot. And through reviewing the data, back at my office just now, I had to run out here because I thought in the film that we had made a strike on the target and sure enough at a thousand yards out of 20 rounds we were able to get a hit on the 224 Valkyrie 90 grain at that yardage even though we couldn't really get any bullet splash uh, indication from the wet soil that we have here today. I'm gonna hold uh couple minutes to the right. Okay. I'm not seeing any splash at all. One round. So, uh, one out of 20 is not good odds, but I will take it today because we had 20 mile per hour winds and man, it was just a, it was just something I did not think was gonna be possible today and I am supremely surprised. Um, I will go through all of the footage and see what we can see on that thing and show it to you guys uh, what we were doing for a thousand yards. One of the things that I was interested in through conversations at SHOT Show this year was how the cartridge paired with existing standardized reticles like the ACSS. 
To see if anything came close, I mounted a Primary Arms 1-6, again in a Midwest Industries 30mm mount, and got it relatively close to zero at 100 yards. I then stepped back to 400 yards and used the 400 yard pre-milled graduation and stepped the zero up until I hit steel in a repeatable fashion. I then did the same for the 90 grain loads. To note, the 75 grain required approximately 1 MOA or 4 inches of adjustment to gain the same point of impact as the 90 grain loads. I left the rifle zeroed for the 90 grain at 400 yards and then shot them both at 100 yards to see where they were printing on paper. Comparing the data that we got from the field to that of Primary Arms ACSS chart, it ultimately looks like the 90 grain load most closely mimics the curve of 308. All right guys, that is our look at what is 224 Valkyrie, and I hope that you guys had as good a time watching this video of us testing it as we had testing it, and I'm pretty impressed with the performance of this caliber. I think that perhaps the 1300 yard effective range claim by Federal may be a little bit generous. And what I mean by that is that when you're shooting a bullet this small, um, the effects down range are very difficult to pick up. And you guys saw that when we did the thousand yard uh, testing. Uh, you're gonna need a very skilled shooter and an even more skilled spotter to be able to do that and a conducive environment like a big sandy berm or something like that to be able to pick up those effects. If you have that, cool. And if you're one of those people probably this this gun is more than capable of doing that for you um, now realistically speaking for your average user i would say that this is a 700 yard varmint killing machine as far as other hunting is concerned i can't really remark on that because this is uh i live in a communist state where i can't hunt with this thing anyway uh, but what i would say is i'm uncertain about uh that currently because um, I'm not saying that the caliber doesn't have the punch, but right now the loadings that we have in 224 Valkyrie are specifically designed for external ballistic performance, not terminal ballistic performance. We know that the Sierra Match King is not designed for shooting animals, it's designed for shooting targets. Um, and I'm going to defer my judgment on the uh, 224 Valkyrie as far as a uh, like a pig killer or a deer killer or anything like that to my buddy Todd Huey down at Lone Star Boars. Go over and follow his channel. I'm sure that here uh, fairly soon he will have something out uh, on what 224 Valkyrie does on pigs and stuff like that. So he's your hunting guy. He's the dude I use for uh, information on what uh, guns do uh, to animals. We almost accomplished everything that we wanted to do uh, with testing on 224 Valkyrie, uh, but if I'm honest, we had a little bit too much fun and we totally ran out of ammunition. Uh, normally we do a thousand rounds for anything that we're testing for you guys, uh, but because of the relative scarcity of the ammunition, we only opted for 500 rounds and we shot all of it. We only had one malfunction out of 500 rounds and that was very early on when we were doing the suppressed testing component. And uh, what I would tell you is if you're using a low volume can, a high back pressure can, uh, like we used, uh, we tested on several cans, but one of the ones that we tested was the Griffin Optimus, and it is um, it is a can that's based on a nine millimeter silencer, so it's very low volume. Uh, it drastically increased the carrier speed, and what was happening when we shot it on that can was the carrier speed was so high that it was hitting the shell casings were hitting the shell deflector and were bouncing back into the action. Uh, we caught that induced one malfunction and this is very easy to address put a heavier buffer in your uh, rifle and you should be good to go or if i'm talking to stag maybe uh, experiment with a longer gas system this gun out of the box is a little bit over gassed and i actually prefer my ar 15s a little bit over gassed because when they get dirty they tend to run much better when they're a little bit over gassed but I can, ex I can see where if somebody's gonna run this gun suppressed all the time, that maybe a uh, rifle length gas system or something like that may be something that they want to make this thing uh, run consistently with 5.56 cans. If you're running a 30 caliber can, probably not an issue at all, but all in all, very good performance out of the Stag 15 Valkyrie, very impressed. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure that you share it around, show all your friends, and hopefully we'll see you guys on a future video.